torrent of water flooded the capsule. Grissom fought his way out. The copter crew raced to hook on. And by the time we got there, the capsule was basically underwater, and the only thing sticking out of the water was the loop itself. The recovery line snapped taut, pulling the helicopter wheels right into the water. Waterlogged, Liberty Bell weighed over 4,000 pounds, more than the Sikorsky Seahorse could safely handle. Flashing lights warned of engine overload. I had an indicator light in the cockpit that there were metal shavings in the oil system. We'd have about five minutes of power left before the engine failed. Meanwhile, with seawater flooding his pressure suit, Grissom was fighting for his life. Now, Gus is madder than hell because he's, he's about to drown. And he's waving and screaming, and they're thinking that he's telling them he's OK, and he wasn't OK. As one chopper struggled to pull the capsule away, another swooped in to save the astronaut. The battle was over. Man and spacecraft headed their separate ways. Grissom bound for safety. Liberty Bell 7 bound for the bottom of the ocean. The success of Kurt Newport's mission hangs on the end of a line. The steel reinforced umbilical cable that connects Needham Tide to the ROV Magellan. Magellan is one of only a handful of machines built to withstand the crushing pressures of the ocean at the depths where Liberty Bell lies. The remotely operated vehicle features a video camera housed in a titanium shell pressurized halogen lamps, and high-performance hydraulics for strength and minute control, even with three and a half tons of force bearing down on every square inch. Every system must check out. At the bottom, Magellan will be four hours away from human help. Mark, give me hydraulics up. 50% ahead, 100% up on that heading. Operating the ROV at these depths will be like flying a two and a half ton kite on a five mile line. that head. Ready? All right, yep. Come loose. Got it. Rate of descent, 60 feet per minute, 15,000 feet to go. Fifteen thousand six hundred feet down, the remotely operated vehicle Magellan prowls a landscape as alien and unforgiving as the surface of the moon. Miles above, Kurt and his team begin the painstaking business of tracking down 16 targets, scouring the ocean floor for an object not much larger than a deck chair on the Titanic. The first pictures from the deep come with bad news attached. The Atlantic has already left Magellan half crippled. We've got a problem with the sonar. Without the sonar, we can't really do a, any, any useful searching down here. We'd just be flying around blind. Rough seas only make the situation worse. In these waves, hauling the ROV up for repairs could snap the tether and send Magellan to the bottom for good got all these all these targets and we can't see them so uh, who knows maybe we won't, we won't be able to see them at all I, mean, I don't know we'll just have to see how it goes not a good day 
Ain't life at sea fun? Kerr decides to keep hunting for Target 71. But without sonar, they can only search as far as Magellan can see, 25 feet ahead. See, okay, you see that right there? Wait, wait. What is it? A few small chunks of debris catch Kurt's eye. You see, look. As Magellan climbs a gentle incline, the debris gets larger. Got some height to it. Against all odds. Oh my god. This is it. The first dive, the first target. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I was supposed to go call some friends at 8 o'clock. This never happens. Oh, this yeah, never, it does. It never happens sure it to happens. me. What? You it doubted. never happens to me. You doubted me the whole time. First target. You the doubted. first target. What are we telling, Mark? Yeah. Look at this. You have little faith. You have yeah. little faith. Liberty Bell 7. Gus Grissom's lost capsule. Look at that. That is absolutely <laughs> Congratulations, man. We just rewrote space history. That's good. All right? <laughs> <laughs> First shot out of the basket. I don't believe it. I don't Isn't believe that beautiful? All right. Congratulations, Kurt. <laughs> I don't believe it. I tried calling Sarah. She's not at home. You see like the shingles on it. The, the... Can you see that? That's a landing bag strap right there. Yeah. yeah. It's perfectly. Look at You can see the writing on the side of the United States. See, okay, you see that right there? Wait, wait. It's a periscope. This flap is still open. United States. It's perfect. It's perfect. Look at the look at the strap sticking out from the landing pad. Look at that. That is absolutely amazing. Jesus. Look at the letter in that, man. I've been telling people for years you'd be able to see that thing all. It looks like they didn't believe me. A relic from man's first steps into space seizes their imagination, looking much as it did on the morning it was lost. Uh, you bring him up, yeah, I'm just leaving there. I'm, uh, okay. We're, we're cool where okay, we are. Now you can see the hatch opening. I know what, you know what that is? That, that's what's left of the beryllium heat shield. All that yeah. stuff, that's all what's pilot corrosion. Yeah. Liberty Bell sits on the rotting remains of its heat shield, source of the debris that led them to the find. Oh, look at that, look to the left. You can see the, see the crack. That's, I think that's the crack painted down the side of it. That's interesting, I wonder why this is. What? See, this this was normally all black. I wonder what that's maybe that was painted or something, that part. See that? 
That's the recovery loop, right there. Day crawl recovery loop. I'm just trying to get this so you can have a... Yeah, get as much of it as you can. The sea gives them barely an hour to examine the find. <laughs> 